how to adapt in this tutorial when they're about the Raspberry Pi 3D. It's a small but powerful desktop computer, and it's capable of doing everything it expects a computer to do, because it's a microcomputer motherboard based on ARM. The Raspberry Pi and memory card are used together, because we will need to write system in memory card. The memory card of 4GB is ok, here we use an 8GB memory card. Also we need a card reader and a USB cable. Here I'm ready, so now let me introduce some of the resources that come with the Raspberry Pi. This is the power interface. This is the HDMI interface. We can connect a camera here, it's a camera interface. Here is an audio interface. Look at here, this is a network interface. These are for USB interfaces. A row of little here is GPIO interface. And here you can connect a monitor. Now that we already have some basic knowledge of Raspberry Pi, now let's start learning about it. So let's install the operating system and downloading some software. Here I use Notepad to list the software and links we need to download for this tutorial. This is the official website of Raspberry Pi. Copy the link to Google Browser and then we enter the Raspberry Pi website. Click download and enter the download page. Here select the latest version. Click download zip. You can see the downloading progress in the lower right corner of the page. I have downloaded it because it takes so long. After unzipping the package, we get an image file. After downloading the operating system, we need to write the image file into the memory card using the software Win32 Disk Image. Let's download the software first. Copy the link to the Google browser. When you enter the page, just click and download. When the downloading is completed, you will see an exe file. Open it. Next, install directly. Now we can see that it is installed on desktop. Because we need to log in the Raspberry Pi remotely, so we need to download the software party. Later, I will show you how to use it. Copy the link, download the link to Google Browser, then enter the page. Download it according to your need. If the operating system of your computer is 32-bit, download the app one. If it's 64-bit, download the second one. The operating system of the computer I use here is 64-bit, so I choose to download this one. You can see the downloading progress in the lower left corner. Now we can see the downloading is completed. Let's open it and then run it. Click Let's and Install. Now we have installed it successfully. Next, we will start the writing system. Insert the memory card into card reader. And then insert a USB drive into the computer. And you can see here the USB drive has been successfully collected. Now let's start the software. 
Here, fill and paste of the image file we just downloaded. Choose the paste according to your computer. Click it to open. It's in G disk here. You can't select other disks here because once you select other disks to run the system, that disk will lose all the data. And now we'll just begin to write it. Click yes. Now it's finished. Click OK and exit. After writing the system, in order to successfully collect the Raspberry Pi, we need to create an SSH file in a USB drive. So let's go to the boot disk and create a new text file. We will just name it SSH and remove the suffix. Click yes. Now let's start the collection of the Raspberry Pi wiring. We need a network cable. Connect it to the network interface of the Raspberry Pi. And then insert the memory card that has been read in the system just now into the card slot of the Raspberry Pi. Now we collect the LED light with the breadboard and the Raspberry Pi. Plug the LED light into the breadboard. Next, we need a 220 ohm resistor. Plug it into the breadboard. Then, connect the jumper wire to the allot of the LED light. Connect the other jumper wire to the cathode on this side. Connect the allot to the port GPIO0. Connect the cathode of resistor to the cathode of Raspberry Pi. In this way, we have collected the LD with Raspberry Pi. Finally, we need to power the Raspberry Pi. Plug the USB cable into the Raspberry Pi. Then power on. Now we can see the LD lights up. We have now finished all the preparatory work, so start using Raspberry Pi. Log in the Raspberry Pi remotely. Go to the party software that I downloaded before and input the IP address here and use SSH to collect. We can log on to the router terminal to see the IP address of the Raspberry Pi or use an IP scanning software. Start it and click scan. Now we can see that there is a Raspberry Pi. Remember its IP address and type it in here. Press End. So now we can see the Raspberry Pi login interface. Login with the username Pi and the default password is Raspberry. And we are in the Raspberry Pi system. So now we need to install a VAM editor. It's a powerful editor. Here we use it to combine C program. First, you need to update the Raspberry source because I have updated once before. So this update will be faster. If it's the first time, it will be much slower. So let's install it. Now we have installed VAM editor successfully. Let's write a C program to make the LD lights on and off. Enter this page. Press I to enter edit mode. And now we can start writing code. First, refer to the file of the Raspberry Pi. Then write a main function. We define the pin of the Raspberry Pi can choose LED as GPIO0. 
and then set the pin as output mode. Then use a while loop. The LED lights on. Delay 500 milliseconds. Then the LED lights off. And delay 500 milliseconds again. Then the LED will light up and light off circularly. Return to zero. The code now is finished. Press ESC shift and corner. Enter command mode. WQ. WQ means write the program to disk and exit. Then compile the program we wrote. Check it with ls. You can see that an executable LED file is generated. And then execute it. Now we can see the LED is blinking. After the experiment, press Ctrl and C to stop this program. Finally, we need to use a command to turn off the Raspberry Pi. We know that the Raspberry Pi is a microcomputer. You can see that here is a monitor. Because the monitor I'm showing here only has VGA interface, so we need a cable to transfer VGA into HDMI. Of course, we can leave out the cable and the mouse. Now we connect the Raspberry Pi with these components. Notice that when collecting, you can't touch the chip here by hand. Then connect the keyboard. The keyboard and the mouse can be inserted to the four interfaces at the wheel. Then connect the network cable. This is a power cable. Then we insert the memory card that has been writing into the system into the Raspberry Pi. So we have finished the collection. Now we power on the Raspberry Pi. We can see that the light is on, indicating that the Raspberry Pi is powered on. Green light is flashing, indicates that the operating system is being read. Now we will turn on the Raspberry Pi and wait for starting. Now the Raspberry Pi is on. We can see that this is its graphic interface. Click on the black icon and enter the command line interface. Now we can see the LD.C program we wrote before and the LD executable file. Now let's start LD.C. We can see that this is the code we wrote before. So we don't have to combine again. Press in C control and colon WQ save and exit. The positive pole is connected to the GPL0 and the negative pole is connected to the negative pole on this side. Now that we have connected the wire, because we have already combined this program, so we can just execute it. Now we can see the LED is blinking. In this tutorial, we will learn some basic knowledge about the Raspberry Pi and how to write the Raspberry Pi operating system and carry out a simple experiment to get fundamental knowledge about the Raspberry Pi. Here we use cable for communication. In the next tutorial, we will show you how to configure the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi to get rid of the limitation of cable and communicate with Raspberry Pi remotely. 
It's an interesting. Then see you in next tutorial.